Uh, g'day Playmates, uh, welcome to another Harmer vid. Uh, this is uh, relevant to DCS, but uh, this vid I'm having a look at uh, the uh, rather esoteric uh, overclocking. Uh, does overclocking your video card help uh, with uh, increasing your frames and making your uh, DCS uh, experience smoother uh, I'm here to find out that uh, so basically what I'm doing is using MSI afterburner pretty much the standard for uh, overclocking uh, video cards as you can see uh, I've got a GeForce GTX 1070 couple of years old uh, obviously not the state of the art neither is my computer it's pretty much in the middle range for DCS uh, it's an i5 uh, series 4 uh, series 4000 uh, runs about I don't know 3.2 or 3.4 megahertz I I, I I can't quite remember uh, but anyway uh, this is not about overclocking the CPU uh, this is about overclocking uh, the uh, the card the uh, the graphics card uh, I can't confess that I know a lot about this. This is basically uh, done on research that I've uh, done uh, on YouTube and uh, various other things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a uh, DCS mission uh, that is very, very heavy on frames. And I'm going to, first of all, run without overclocking, and then I'm going to run with overclocking. Uh, so uh, I've done a reset uh, on MSI afterburner so uh, everything is line ball uh, the power limit uh, and the temperature limit I've got linked together and uh, uh, for no other reason than that that was su suggested these are the five parameters uh, that I, I'm going to use for overclocking and then uh, these are the five graphic, uh, the um, the um, graphic monitors. Uh, the top one uh, is percentage of power. Uh, as you can see, uh, we can go to a maximum of 150%. Uh, at the moment, uh, maximum is showing 34%. Next down from that is the uh, GPU temperature. Uh, it'll go to 100 degrees uh, Celsius. However, it will shut down probably at about 90%. Uh, and uh, you don't really want to be, uh, I really want to be just running my temperatures uh, no more than 70, probably around about 65, 68. Uh, as you can see at the moment, uh, temperatures uh, running at 40 degrees, 41 degrees. Uh, next is the CPU usage, uh, the GPU usage rather, uh, up to 100%. Uh, you can see at the moment um, it's running at about 16%. Uh, and then uh, the core clock, uh, it will max out at 1595. I intend to increase that value. Um, and then uh, the memory clock uh, will max out at 4000 uh, megahertz again uh, I intend to push that up a little bit further uh, okay so what am I running uh, I am running lots of things that I normally do for DCS first of all I'm running DCS simple radio it uh, doesn't take much in the way of resources, but I want to put uh, the afterburn, I want to put the card under load uh, as I normally would with DCS. Uh, I've got Discord happening. Uh, I've also got uh, Joystick Gremlin, which is a third party program that uh, software corrects my Warthog uh, slew, mini slew hat. Uh, makes it work properly so you know I have to run that as well uh, MSI afterburner uh, and then of course on top of that uh, I'm recording this as well so um, put in a fair load uh, on my you know mid-range uh, fairly old computer so without any further ado let's open up DCS um, and the mission that I'm going to use, I'd like to thank Phil Stiles uh, from 54 Squadron uh, in Germany for 
uh, letting me use uh, one of his early uh, DCS Storm of War uh, missions. Uh, and the reason why I'm choosing DCS Normandy and flying the Spitfire is that this is by far and away uh, my worst um, frame rated um, yeah, multiplayer uh, mission. Um, so uh, there's a lot going on in this and you will see that without overclocking it's pretty much unplayable. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, here I am uh, in my own server, uh, so uh, I should have a ping of zero, so um, the ping shouldn't make any difference to my frames. Uh, I'm going to use the ASOS Storm of War uh, Normandy uh, mission, and uh, I'm going to start that up. Uh, I do realize that, you know, all this is bits and pieces uh, that you've basically got to do. Like, you know, I've, I've actually uh, optimized my uh, card, uh, my D NVIDIA card with settings on the card itself. Uh, and of course, you know, I've got uh, DCS running on an SSD drive. So, you know, uh, I've already mitigated, you know, some of the potentially frame rate killing things. Uh, so, you know, overclocking uh, is a um, bit of a, I don't know, for want of a better word, maybe a last ditch attempt at, at uh, curing frames. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to go uh, the RAAF uh, in a Spitfire at Long Jesu Mare. Uh, as you can see, the GPU is already up to pushing towards 2000 megahertz. Let's go to the briefing. I'm not interested in in the briefing. I'm more interested in flying. Okay, here we go. And let me unpause the mission. Okay, I'm just waiting now for my track IR to settle down. Okay, uh, it seemed too bad. Let's. Uh, okay, all right. Let's uh, let's start this up. So the first thing is to crack the throttle open a little bit, uh, put on full brakes, and uh, okay, start this uh, start this up. Uh, pito heat, uh, fuel pump, carburetor air. Yeah, it's already. Yeah, already juddering a little bit. Uh, magnetos on, fuel on, uncover the starter caps and pump this three or four times. Well, four or five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think we're all ready to start up now. Uh, oh no, I need mixture fully forwards and I think I am ready to go now okay just make sure that I haven't got too much throttle I don't want to tip the nose over okay here we go contact there we go we're up and running Okay, uh, so let me just close the cockpit. Uh, actually, no, we'll taxi out now. Um, so, you know, not real smooth frames, as you can see. So I'm going to attempt to taxi, actually put some lights, interior lights on. I can see what's happening in the cockpit a little bit better. Uh, Okay, actually, before I do taxi out, uh, I better just do my uh, do my trim. Uh, I want a little bit of nose down. I think 
probably as I remember it, I think it's about a notch down and also uh, some rudder trim I think about there as I remember uh, okay yeah, I may as well put the gun side on while I'm at it uh, all right let's taxi this thing out now Okay, as you can see, not good frames. Uh, you know, if there was another two or three people, uh, pilots with you, you know, on the ground, ready, you know, for a takeoff on mass, uh, it'd be uh, pretty frustrating. Way. Yeah, pretty choppy, eh? Pretty choppy. Uh, let's close the cockpit. Um, okay. Let's see whether we can get this in the air without too much. Uh, too much drama, so pull back on the stick just gently. Ease her forwards. In the air, gear up. RPM back to about 2600. Uh, alrighty. And I'm going to uh, obviously uh, fly over, over land f fairly low uh, just to push the frames GPU is maxing out at 1974 That's quite bad. So I'm heading for the smoke. Okay, let me just trim this out a little bit. Right, so let me head over to that smoke over there and then uh, I will uh, I'll quit the server and then uh, do a comparison uh, running with uh, overclocking.
All right, let's quit out of this. Let's quit to desktop. Okay, so uh, check in. Um, the power was uh, power was maxed out at uh, seventy nine percent. Uh, my temperature uh, went to 62 max. Uh, my uh, Jeep's, uh, GPU usage was 100%. Uh, so um, uh, the core clock was maxed out at uh, just under 2000, as I remember. Um, and uh, the memory clock maxed out at just over 4000. Uh, for 007. Uh, okay, so as you can see, now that I've quit out of DCS, everything you know has uh, settled down. Um, so what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to apply uh, profile number one, uh, and I've loaded it. Uh, so basically, um, this I have sort of uh, pre you know sort of prepared you know before uh, I've um, gone for a hundred percent core voltage and a hundred percent power limit uh, I don't want to go any further than that uh, I don't want to push the core voltage any more than a hundred percent or either the power limit uh, I've uh, overclocked the core clock uh, to 130 um, so that should show a maximum of somewhere around around about the 2200 megahertz um, and I've pushed the uh, memory clock to plus 400 so that should show around about uh, 4400 um, and uh, yeah, the fan speed is auto now. What I do need to do is I need to apply these settings. So uh, we've now I've now applied the overclocking. So let's get back into DCS, see whether it really does make any reasonable difference to frame rates or whether uh, whether it's worth it or not. And basically, these settings here, uh, you know, were I just I tried them at twenty. You know, so I'd start at uh, plus 20 and then, you know, go to plus 50. Uh, then I jumped to plus 80 and then, you know, uh, I just went in 10 increments and uh, stopped at 130. Similarly here, I started with that in 50. Um, and then once I got to about 300, uh, just added 20s um, quite sort of steadily. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, don't use settings where you just immediately rip them up to, you know, X amount. You've just got to do it uh, in increments and then, you know, test against your um, uh, your sim. Uh, okay, so multiplayer, new server, storm of war. And okay, start again. the same Spitfire at the same base. And pause, unpause the mission. Uh, okay, and uh, you can see we're overclocking to the tune of uh, 2126 megahertz at the moment, sort of dropping in and out. Um, obviously, it hasn't cured the problem. Uh, so I'm just just waiting for the track IR to settle down. The question is, you know, uh, is it helping at all? Uh, it's not stopping the problem, but you know, is it uh, is it going to help me in squeeze some more frames out? And um, that's quite a yeah, quite a sharp two or three seconds there of the track IR sticking. Uh, all right, so let's start this up. Of 
course, you know, the other problem with, uh, you know, with the crap frames is that it, it makes it actually hard to, you know, uh, to move small levers and switches when the frames are, you know, jumping around all over the place. Uh, okay, uh, crack the throttle open and uh, nets. Uh, I got my magnetos on. Uh, fuel on. Uncover the caps. Four, one, two, three, four. One for lock and okay. Contact. Let's put the okay. Let's just run this up and uh, okay. Well, <coughs> excuse me, doesn't seem to be making a heap of difference, although my track IR. Seems to be okay uh, at this moment in time. Uh, let me put some lights on. Come on, that's it. And let's now uh, let's set the trim up for takeoff. do and that'll do and okay. all right so let's taxi out Doesn't seem to be any any better. So you know whether or not I should be uh, trying to push more out of my overclocking. Uh, I don't know. I need to pull back on the stick to get this. Yeah, back, re and back and recentered. Uh, close the cockpit. Okay, stick back and away we go.
Okay, just up in the air. So, gear up. Down to 2.6, throttle back. Just trim this nose down a little bit. And then inland. So, I don't know whether you guys agree with me, but uh, overclocking doesn't seem to have made much of a difference. Or a big enough difference, you know, to be able to tell. All right, we ran at uh, eighty-five percent power, uh, so I think that was uh, I think that was up about twenty percent. Uh, our maximum temperature was sixty-two, which I don't really think was that much different. So you know, we didn't really push the GPU temperature. Um, the uh, the GPU usage we maxed it out. At 2126, um, yeah, because we were basically adding another 130 uh, to the core clock, uh, and of course uh, with the memory clock we maxed that out at 4,404 because obviously we added 400 megahertz to that. Um, yeah. Okay. So look, thanks for watching. I'd be interested to know what your comments. Uh, whether you've been successful in overclocking yourself, uh, any hints. Um, so, yep, yeah, okay, I'll catch you guys later. Cheers, bye.